Hello again guys and welcome to another Anatomy and Physiology screencast and this week we're going to be talking about the very difficult subject of the dissociation curve. Now before we talk about that I just want to recap a couple of things from last lesson in what we spoke about partial pressures and in particular things about diffusion. So diffusion is the movement of gases between areas. So at the end of the lesson we looked at gases exchange and we talked about why gases move from one place to another and we talked about what's called external respiration now if you see a question in the exam remember external respiration means in the alveoli it's not breathing in and breathing out inspiration expiration it's external respiration so it's talking about how the gases move within the alveoli in your lungs just to recap there's a quick diagram of gases exchange in the lungs so you've got air coming in to the alveoli down that middle blue sort of test tube if you like on the left you've got blue deoxygenated blood coming in from the heart where it meets the alveoli it collects oxygen and moves off to become red or oxygenated blood don't forget key point gases move from high to low pressure and that's very important if you're talking about a question on external respiration or internal respiration if you write that down you're going to gain a mark because you're showing what your knowledge is with regards to the gases all right so let's work this through as we did at the end of the lesson so if we look along the top blood arriving to the alveoli sent from the heart that's the blue blood coming into the alveoli is high in carbon dioxide PP partial pressure so it's full of carbon dioxide so the pressure of carbon dioxide is very high which also in contrast means at the same time it is very low in oxygen partial pressure now when that blue bloodstream meets the alveoli it, that means because of our golden rule that gases move from high to low pressure the carbon dioxide will move into the alveoli and out through your trachea and out through your mouth and into the atmosphere we'll get rid of it okay because the gas has moved from high to low pressure carbon dioxide is high in the bloodstream but it's low in the alveoli because you've just breathed in oxygen if you look at the bottom box in the alveoli that blue test tube in the middle of our picture as we breathe in it is high in oxygen partial pressure because we've just gulped in a load of oxygen which means at the same time it is low in carbon dioxide partial pressure and therefore it means that that oxygen coming into your alveoli and through your lungs will move into the bloodstream so that will move into the bloodstream creating the red blood in our diagram and that will move off to the heart because the bloodstream levels are high in carbon dioxide but low in oxygen so the gases again move from high to low pressure they just swap over if we're looking at what happens in the muscle which I asked you to draw a diagram about it is called internal respiration again don't get confused with inspiration and expiration internal respiration is to do with muscles diffusion gases exchange here's the diagram the yellow bit in the middle represents the muscle the red bit on the side is blood coming in from the heart it meets the muscle the oxygen goes into the muscle group the carbon dioxide swaps and comes out and then that creates the blue blood which returns to the heart deoxygenated blood again to recap gases move from high to low pressure and we'll exchange we'll explain the switch over so another chart to help you out along the top so that red blood arriving to the muscle sent from the heart is high in oxygen that's why it's red in the diagram high in oxygen partial pressure so when it meets the muscle it will move into the muscle the oxygen will move into the muscle because in the muscle it's low in oxygen partial pressure and full of carbon dioxide in the bottom box in the muscles so in that yellow area on the diagram it is high in carbon dioxide because the muscle is using the oxygen to move so it's high in carbon dioxide 
which also means it's low in oxygen and that means when the bloodstream hits the capillaries in that muscle group the carbon dioxide in the muscle will move into the bloodstream and therefore create deoxygenated blood or blue blood in our diagram and send off to the heart all right so it's just a quick swap over between carbon dioxide and oxygen with both of those internal and external respiration again go over this as much as you like make sure you're clear about it ask me if you need any help now we come to the tricky bit if that's not tricky enough already it's what we call the dissociation curve and a lot of people get hung up about this and essentially the dissociation curve what you need to know is the facts that I'm going to speak to you about within this screencast. So try and stick to this and don't overthink it. The dissociation curve explains the amount of oxygen saturated with haemoglobin. So our molecule of haemoglobin fully loaded with oxygen is called saturated or associated. So if you remember when we drew the haemoglobin HB on the board a few weeks back we can take four molecules of oxygen for each haemoglobin and when a haemoglobin has four molecules of oxygen that is what we call saturated or associated the minute we get rid of one of those oxygen molecules to somewhere like the muscles etc that is what we call unloading or dissociation so we're letting the oxygen go because we need it in the body and that's dissociation from the haemoglobin okay here's the horrible diagram this is what we call the dissociation curve and if you see it's a very curvaceous shape if you like along the bottom along the x-axis is the partial pressure of oxygen measured in mmhg which you know is millimeters of mercury and goes from 0 to 100 along the y-axis going upwards is the percentage of haemoglobin molecules that we've just talked about that are saturated that are fully loaded with four lots of oxygen now the only things you need to know about this curve is that if we go along the x-axis on the bottom we need to find 40 the reason we need to find 40 is because that is the partial pressure of oxygen in your muscle groups so 40 is for muscle groups now once we found 40 if we travel up towards where we meet the curve we can then take a reading of how much haemoglobin is saturated within the muscle groups because that's our y-axis, the percentage of saturated haemoglobin. So if we find 40 and go up towards the curve and might take a reading that says 75% of haemoglobin is saturated in our muscle groups. Okay. Now, the only other thing we need to know is at the lungs. And again, going on the x-axis, the bottom axis, we find 100 which is right at the end 100 is the partial pressure of oxygen in your lungs in your alveoli and again if we follow the curve up to where it meets the curve line and look along the y-axis of percentage of saturated haemoglobin we'll see that's roughly about 98 percent so in our alveoli in our lungs when we breathe in at rest 98% of the haemoglobin in our lungs is filled with oxygen molecules saturated all right so what that's saying is in the in the lungs we've got lots of molecules filled up with oxygen at rest in the muscles there's less there's only 75% of haemoglobin molecules filled up with oxygen now if we go back along to our 40 line for the muscle groups along the bottom and we find our 75% where it meets the curve that is the amount that is saturated as I've just mentioned the amount that's missing so 75 to make 100 is 25 
75 and 25 makes 100. So that means 25% at that point in the muscle groups is being disassociated, which means at rest, our haemoglobin molecules are letting go of 25% of oxygen, probably to keep us moving, to keep our body working, to keep the muscles functioning at rest. All right? Now that's important. And that's key. So the only things you need to write down from this screencast, from this point of view, from this first curve, is this. At rest, in the muscles, the partial pressure of oxygen is 75% saturated, fully loaded, haemoglobin, and 25% dissociated, not fully haemoglobin, letting go of oxygen. And in the lungs, the partial pressure of oxygen is 98% saturated, much higher, because it's filling with oxygen all the time, and only 2% is disassociated, not full up. Now what the examiner is going to ask you is what the difference is when we exercise or when we start to move. What happens to the haemoglobin when we start to exercise? In terms of association and disassociation, that's all you need to know. So this looks more complicated at the moment. And this is what happens. So as we start to run around, we start to move, maybe do some press-ups, we're going to follow the red line on this diagram. Okay. So originally we got the black line, that was our curve a minute ago. At rest is the black line, black curve. We're now looking at the red line because we've started to exercise. And what happens as you start to exercise is this curve moves to the right. So again, if we follow the same logic as what we've just done, first thing we're going to do is find 40 along the bottom x-axis. So partial pressure of oxygen in the muscles, as we just said, is 40. So we're going to find 40. We're going to follow the graph up until it meets the red line. And then we're going to take a reading of percentage of haemoglobin that is saturated on the left. Okay. So if I follow my 40 up, I make that 55%. 55% of haemoglobin is now saturated in the muscles, which is less than what we just had at rest. So we've got less haemoglobin taking on all four molecules of oxygen when we're running around than what we do at rest. Now that's important. And the thing you need to think about is, why does that happen? Why is it less? And the reason is because we need to unload more oxygen to our muscle groups. And the unloading is called disassociation. So again, if we look at the 40 again and travel up to the 55% of saturation, 55 to 100 now is 45%. So 45% is now being disassociated to the muscles. It means we're giving more away. We're giving more oxygen to the muscles as we start to exercise, which is logic really because the, the muscle groups need more oxygen. So that process has got to speed up. We need more oxygen. The haemoglobin needs to let go quicker. If we have a look at the lungs, though, at 100% of partial pressure of oxygen at the bottom. So along the x-axis, find 100. We go up. The black line was our original line. The red line is the new line we're looking at. So 100 up to the top. Follow it across to the left. I think that's roughly 94, 95%. So in the lungs, there's not been that much of a change because it still needs to associate. We need to get haemoglobin to carry the oxygen to our muscles. So it needs to associate, it needs to stick like glue so we can send it around the body. All right. So again, don't get hung up about the graph. Don't need to think about that just these key things to think about. When we exercise, in the muscles, the pressure of oxygen 
is 55% saturated so there is a lower amount being saturated and 45% disassociated therefore when we start to run when we start to train more oxygen is being dissociated it's given to the muscles we need to feed the muscles more during exercise that's important but in the lungs only a slightly bit less is being saturated and a slightly bit more is being dissociated because we still need the hemoglobin to carry that oxygen around the body the last thing the examiner will ask you other than those key points that I've, I've told you is why does the curve shift to the right why does that curve move so we know the purpose of of when we draw it what happens in terms of dissociation association but what makes that curve shift to the right other than just starting exercise well it's due to four things number one as you start to exercise your body temperature rises and that will make that curve shift again as you start to exercise two things happen you're decreasing the partial pressure in the oxygen in the muscles that's because if you remember at the start of this screencast when your muscles start to work they use up oxygen so the oxygen decreases and therefore there is an increase of partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the muscle groups that should say increase of PP of CO2 in the muscles so the muscles are using up oxygen they're creating carbon dioxide and the last factor that makes that curve shift to the right is what we call the Bohr effect so if you know anything about pH scales that is to do with that and we'll talk about that in the lesson okay this is a really complex subject go over this a fair few times to understand it I will help you out within the lesson bring good notes to the lesson you don't need to draw the graphs I'll provide the graphs but bring good notes to the lesson as to what happens between association and dissociation and what are the factors that make the curve move stick to those don't get bogged down with anything else